uh, or influenced by your desire for multiple women can also toss a man uh, awry. So I'm not calling Marcus Rogers' wives, all of them, wicked, but I am saying that his desire for these multiple women, his passions for females, um, have, have tossed him. They have tossed him. They are causing rottenness to have proliferated in his bones as a gangrene. Um, but thankfully, it has not spread so far to a point where he, as a man, can like basically just consider himself dead once and for all. It's more like something that requires an amputation and the amputation is a deep and, and thoughtful consideration that he would have to enter into because it would mean putting away a woman he loves. It would mean um, celibacy for the rest of his days. It would mean literally settling, not settling, but a, a taking it in his stride that he's not going to be having sex. But you see, the nice thing about the time that we're finding ourselves in right now is that there is no time left on this earth. Um, so Marcus Rogers wouldn't even have to deal with celibacy for another 30 years. He will likely just have to deal with it for another 10, maybe eight, I don't know, depending on when the tribulation has to start. And that would be a sufficient enough motivation for him to do this. I know of a man online that has done that and I have mad respect for him. Tony Lamb, he put away his wife um, because, and both of them are in Christ, right? So they both agreed on this, but he put her away because she was a second while his um, original is still around, walking this earth and breathing. And in of, in, in, and in and all of herself, that woman also has ex-husbands that are, that she, um, I don't know if she, they're divorced or they are late or whatever, but both of them are in sin and they decided that they're going to separate because they cannot for the life of them continue to dishonor God in this way and perpetually stay in sin. Like, you know, we are not sinless as Christians. However, when we linger in like persistent sin that just we don't wash off, get rid of, we display that we are not indwelt by the Holy Spirit or consistent sufficiently convicted to repent from it so faith without works is dead and we you know the lord shows that we are indwelt by him because we make hard decisions we make tough choices we leave sin we leave sin and so when you don't leave adultery and you're just like perpetually in it despite god gonging in your head guang 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 by the holy spirit all throughout the years you are in presumptuous sin you are disregarding him entirely you could not care to hear what he has to say and god is going to say depart from me worker of iniquity i never knew you i called you i told you what needs to happen and you flat out um, ignored me. I warned you through my sons um, and you just continued to carry on in your own state. So he's very, very defensive. Marcus Rogers, if you find him, every time anybody comes um, at him to try and have a discussion with him about something, he's extremely defensive and he only allows certain people to talk with him. Um, he only does debates with certain people online and he also justifies, goodness, he loves to justify what he's into, like his justifications for why marrying a third wife and whatnot. And it's like, come on are you really solidly convicted dude that what you're saying is right are, are you for real real like do you really believe that you're cool do you seriously believe you know what my head, i've got such a big forehead <laughs> that guy dust my forehead as well anyway i just want to switch off the light to see if this shiny little thing here will seize <laughs> it's causing me great insecurity yeah i think that's been <laughs> anyway whatever but the sun is setting so i really need you to get this message out like as quickly as i possibly can yeah so that is uh what in the world it is let me open the door slightly more to bring in a little bit more light i don't know if that helped stop screeching anyway yeah so that is the situation there with marcus rogers so i do believe that one of the biggest reasons why he's not gaining conviction solidly to walk away from certain doctrines and he's sticking to his guns is because he is not hearing from the holy spirit as, as strongly as he used to due to his rebellion his rebellion has basically given him a little bit of earwax issues type establishment thing and that has made him ineffective in the kingdom of heaven at least uh through and through and he is uh leading only those that are not studious and in not so much a wicked path because he's not he preaches against sin but just doctrinal misunderstanding and you see the thing about doctrinal misunderstanding is it, it enables you to figure out where we find ourselves in the history of the human race my people perish for a lack of knowledge and if you don't purify or cleanse your understanding do you understand with the scriptures you will never grow in grace you will also never grow in knowledge and you will also not have your eyes sort of kind of you know have that glimmer that spark that goes oh wow whoa figured it out like aha moments come with constant study um cutting off or severing false doctrines or like misunderstandings of scripture that you historically came into the faith with they fall off with constant study over the years you know you get convicted away from certain 
philosophies of man that you hung on to even though you imagine they were christian you walk away from them by the scriptures you launder falsehood with truth that's what happens and i'm still waiting for men like vody Bakum and john MacArthur to be laundered from their cessationist doctrine i'm literally still waiting for it but like when you study the scriptures and you get convicted and you look around ultimately at some point god will sever you from no matter how prideful you might be to want to hang on to certain doctrines uh he will sever you from thinking like you know folly and i believe marcus rogers is holding on to his false doctrine because of the fact that there are so many things that he's doing in his own fire and strength that god is like distant from him now not because god has made himself distant but because he's walked away. he's walked away he was redeemed from hearing his testimony very young or at least based on him very young right and given how young he was when he first i thought marcus rod the first woman i thought that maybe uh he wasn't saved yet and so that's why he married her or at least interested in the things of god i thought that that's what might have happened i never knew that there was a second woman now i do know and i just recently found out that all of them you know he that he apparently put the first two away because they weren't godly enough he was trying to train them up in christ you ought to have known that like by this by but you you know you will know them by their fruit you test people by their fruit you ought to know when a woman is not bearing fruit in christ you ought to know when a man is not bearing fruit in christ and so therefore make the hard decision to despite your strong feelings for them just not fully finish off the marriage marcus rogers did not do that. you know when god gives you everything you need in order to live a life in god and you disregard him because your passions are running awry that's problematic that high cran cat that is under heaven what 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 happened there and i i spoke this whole lengthy thing about marcus rogers um because everybody knows marcus rogers or at least a lot of people in the christian community know him whereas not very many people know this guy that i just come out of the random relationship with um you would then be able to understand what in the world it is that i almost got into this dude was a marcus rogers through and through now marcus rogers is a big fat chunky voice against the hebrew israelites that little cult whatever it is that they're running it's absolutely heretical it makes no sense and i don't know how they're able to reconcile themselves being the true hebrews when all the stuff that is happening in israel is happening that is fulfilling bible prophecy i, I, I don't get how they can justify that I, I just i don't anyway whatever so this dude was running with that doctrine believing that he's an actual hebrew and i'm like whoa look at your skin dude um no you're like me ain't we black dude we black um that that disqualifies you Jeff. as soon as you come out looking like me you ain't a hebrew like you gotta have that all of skin be born either in the middle east or somewhere else around the world because you got scattered but nonetheless they look a particular way you cannot be them you're not them you're you're just some black dude that was born the other day and um you were not initially chosen you're a gentile that's what you are just take it it's not like god has rejected you because he gave us the opportunity to get born again through the car through the blood of the king so why, why why are you being so greedy for status up in this this monster like relax you're not a hebrew anyway whatever could not uh uproot that out of him so um marcus rogers would then would then love to imagine that he would be better than this guy but it's it's the fact it's such things like the fact that no one could uh counsel him thoroughly or sufficiently enough to convict him away from that doctrine that is the problem the fact that no one is able to sufficiently counsel marcus rogers for example away from um oneness the fact that no one is able to sufficiently counsel him away from his falsehood concerning um the gifts of the holy spirit the fact that no one is able to sufficiently counsel him um unto soberness away from his beliefs about divorce and remarriage is the very same thing that caused that guy that i was with to just not be rehabilitated he's he was rehabilitable away from the doctrine that the hebrew israelites hold on to where they believe that they are the true hebrews and then the jews you know it's, it's a form of replacement theology but worse even than the real replacement theology like replacement theology has it that uh people believe that they have replaced the jews uh but they don't believe themselves to be the jews they just say that the promises of the jews now belong to them the hebrew israelites take it to another level where all together where they say that they're the hebrews and it's just like whoa okay ugh. it makes me cringe it makes me squirm but he believed that and it made me crease my forehead like straight away because i'm very Berean and i calculate like whenever people speak i'm always like you know i listen to a lot of content online from random people that i don't know that do like you know grainy little videos one or two views i listen to them all because goodness you don't know you know christ could speak you know he uses the small things to shame the the, the, the big foolish things of the world to shame the wise etc but in listening to everybody i understand that deception is very lofty in these last days in listening to everyone i also listen which is this very keen ear that's always got like a bible flapping in my ear that launders information that comes into the one ear right that it might come out on the other side like a nice little sharp double-edged sword so I, I i know how to throw a baby with bath water when it comes to listening to christian on uh, christians all across the world i don't throw them away i just know that sometimes they can be mistaken in what they believe and i'm not saying i'm perfect but you know the bible does say study to show yourself approved use the scriptures as your laundromat so i, I launder um the scriptures and this dude was 
was no different when he came into my life, you know? Everything he said, there was a Bible paging in the one ear, and when it came out, uh, there was just a lot of junk coming out on some, mm -mm, this is what needs to be wiped off and dusted off, and I tried, I tried um, to, to correct him, um, not so much by teaching him myself, but leading him to sound doctrine, but you could tell that so many other people have tried in the past because he got very defensive and was like, all you guys are so judgmental, and I have listened to this pastor, this preacher, this guy who speaks against this theology, but have you read Deuteronomy this? Have you, like, he kept on taking me back to his doctrine, and he also kept on rejecting the men that I recommended to him, suggesting that he, just like Marcus Rogers, had had many people try and correct his doctrine, but he stuck to his guns. And for me, it was like, why, why? What is it about a person that professes Christianity that is unable to accept truth the holy way you know god is spirit and those who worship him worship him in spirit and in truth and so therefore if something is not true the holy spirit will be grieved until you finally get convicted that this is messed up and that also makes me wonder why so many catholics don't like snap out of their additional apocryphic beliefs that are brought into their space by you know the falsehood that that, 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 that like swept into the christian church and so therefore created catholicism um it's like if, if you're truly born again by the spirit of the lord at some point you will get out of an environment that is teaching you nonsense however long it takes uh, but if you are constantly being communicated to that <laughs> and it's it's many different people from different walks of life you are obviously being given grace by god to repent from a certain doctrinal understanding or a certain way about your life and if you just don't respond you display in your stubborn rebellious state that you are not born again because you are resisting the spirit of god you are no longer in a place where you are grieving the holy spirit now you're just resisting him meaning that um you're not saved at all because the world is who rejects resists the holy spirit the world of un of unregenerates of people who are not born again they're the ones that are always trying to come up with all different kinds of doctrines of demons to explain away their sin so i reached somewhat of what i imagined to be a sober conviction that this guy wasn't even saved at all because of how stubborn he was to basic correction and also the recognition or the remembrance of what he told me about how so many other people had tried to talk him out of this but he's not barging I'm sorry you're not barging then goodbye you know but I didn't say goodbye so quickly because like I said nobility and on top of that I had feelings for him right uh, but the Lord is the one that convicted not convicted me God didn't he did convict me that this guy was messed up but I was trying to run with it anyway however because this guy was not exactly a Marcus Rogers because like I said Marcus Rogers he just needs to be put through a laundromat do you understand what I'm saying this dude just needs needed to be saved like period I, 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 like he was dark he was in the occult he was doing very shady things and he lured me into his ecosystem using sorcery that's not Marcus Rogers for at least from what the Lord has shown me he's not involved in dark arts he is genuinely trying to serve God however in his own little power whereas this dude was not even convicted or at least convinced away from certain things that he was doing plus this guy was busy fornicating he was actively fornicating when I met him goodness gracious Marcus Rogers the reason he married another woman was be precisely because he didn't want to sin against God and fornicate you know what I mean so there are differences and I was rescued from a Marcus Rogers by the by the infiltration into my space of this man i feel like let me just go switch on the light again because you know it's getting dark <laughs> anyway uh, let me just carry on talking and see how much longer we can carry like you know push this with these lighting conditions i was rescued from there might even be a power cut this is south africa anyway whatever i was rescued from a marcus rogers that i would have ended up married to inevitably by someone who wasn't saved but was a mock-up a bit of a caricature a parodic um reimagination of a marcus rogers right in the sense that this dude was also a dude that got saved at a very early age saved at a very young age but never really gained any solid conviction about what god would have uh, him do um he just haphazardly married you know despite his conviction in christ the first he married two women the first one he was already a christian but she was in this world in the worst way and he thought that he could just teach her teacher when the bible makes it clear don't be unequally yoked he then went on right ahead to marry a second one after they got divorced and this and he like i said fornication he just never stopped he was also constantly cheating on these women from what God showed me he never confessed that however um so it wasn't even because of the marital unfaithfulness of the woman that he gave them a letter of divorcement it was his own indiscretion in there and then the woman retaliated by also cheating you know one of those toxic relationships he came from those but he found me saw me and was like I finally just like Marcus Rogers I finally this time around want a godly woman because I noticed the mistakes I made but by then he had had those two former results and wanted to then subjugate me to the tyranny of adultery and I would have accommodated him and he would have likely 
not been kicked out of my life by the demons in him because he manifested lots of demons because he was involved in the occult he would have not have been so easily and so quickly kicked out of my life if he was a marcus rogers who is not daily just consuming demons because he is not about their life he genuinely wants christ whereas this dude was a dabbler so i was rescued from this bullet basically of marrying a dude with a former wife and two former wives and some kids i was rescued from that uh by the fact that he was actually just satanic but the lord has warned me that if you're not sober and vigilant and if you don't reinstall in your bones because you literally had it in you already but you decided to disbelieve if you don't reinstall in your bones the conviction that i gave you garabo about marriage and remarriage and the, the marriage divorce and remarriage if you don't reinstall it back into your bones you're gonna find yourself because of your sorrow and your deep pain settling for a marcus rogers because this time around he's not going to be manifesting every time you pray and fast some strange demons he won't manifest because he won't be indwelled by demons because he won't be as satanic as the first guy and so this is bringing me then to this um place where i want i didn't even want to chat today but um i'm here because god has led me you know i have had this word in my belly all day but i haven't shared it because i was just melancholy i was sorrowful i was crying uh for the past two days big and after there's just been an intensification of sorcery slapping me coming from this guy because he is unable to let go um of me right uh because that's the thing about people involved in the occult they shoot themselves in the foot and then when they sober from their demons they suddenly want to come back again so there is this song I'm gonna switch on the light now because I'm disquieted by how dark it is there is this uh, a Mary J Blige song right there we go the shiny forehead again just take it in your stride right anyway this Mary J Blige song goes um cuz I can't live without you baby and I'll be waiting for you when you get home cuz I can't live without you baby hey, hey, hey. Oh. Right oh now because this dude slapped me with a whole bunch of in my country they call it Gorobela, it's a love curse, right? Uh, because he imagined that he could just keep on luring me with sorcery. Uh I imagined initially when I kept on hearing this song on a loop in my in my mind that it was a satanic entity just patronizing the living tailors out of me uh, telling me that i'm going to end up getting back together with this dude there are so many things that were revealed about this guy that make it such that i can never be with him um poignant among them of which is the fact that he's just not saved and he loves sorcery but there's other issues that have been exposed and I, i'm not prepared to raise them again because really you know trigger type thing we're not trying to do that anyway whatever so i thought that that was the holy not the holy spirit but the wickedness that is the prince of the power of the air the mystery of iniquity that is floating around trying to like get me to like butt heads with god right anyway whatever this whole circumstance uh, the song i just i've been hearing it on a loop and i would roll my eyes and i stopped rolling my eyes last night because it keeps on coming up because uh, i can't live without you baby and i'll be waiting for you when you get home da -da 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 -da. i bet you know that song right by mary j blanche yeah keep on hearing it over and over and because yesterday i caught up i'm i was backlogged i started out with that i led with that because i was ba backlogged right and then I finally caught up all that I could keep saying in my mind in some kind of joy even though I was really sad crying I was I've been crying for the past few days like non-stop okay because I'm in a lot I'm under a lot of spiritual attack because of this guy he keeps on sending me a whole bunch of sorcery because this I don't know what he expects man like there's no way we can ever get back together for a myriad of reasons anyway whatever uh so I'm busy like like you know my my the, the, the demonic attack on me caused me lots of sorrow lots of tears lots of but you've just like you don't care about me like why am I still not married what's going on like, and then i would get like flash visions and i've been getting them for weeks now uh, of me being in a bridal gown i've been seeing myself in a bridal gown every day at least five times i see myself i get a vision of me being in a gown every day and it's ramped up like that <laughs> the past month every day and i've been writing it off because feast of trumpets came trumpets came and went rapture didn't happen um Oh, like my hope has i've been very discouraged anyway because i've been waiting for the rapture right y'all if you check out my most recent work you will see i've been talking a lot about the tribulation and uh what the lord has shown me is going to happen in the millennial reign type establishment thing because we're going home we're going home and no i'm not getting married not here okay type establishment thing not on, not on the side of eternity and I've, I've said that anyway whatever right oh cool beans and bananas right so when that song rang in my mind because of this dude's involvement in sorcery and the fact that he keeps on slapping me with it and i'm like dude aren't you scared that the rapture is happening soon don't you see the things happening 
happening around the world just repent and go to heaven for crying out loud anyway whatever right oh so i thought that what that was was just me being patronized by the demons that this guy keeps on sending me because witchcraft while it doesn't work on christians my goodness how they can whisper into your ears how they can cause you lots of sorrow they can make you cry they can heavy you can walk around feeling like you're underwater um like just a lot of sorrow a dem demonic attack if you yeah if you're a christian you know what it was like okay yeah i thought that that's what that was right and I, I'm, I'm just like waiting to overcome like waiting to get over it you know because it takes time to pray it off so i'm just waiting for that time to arrive um so i can be cool again you know what i mean uh and then i hear that song yeah where you want you baby i'll be waiting for you when you get home but alongside the same time i was like i'm more caught up i'm excited i've caught up my bottleneck of my projects is out of the way and the lord was like exactly and all of a sudden that song became a joyous song <laughs> <laughs> a glorious song i literally lit up i was like <gasps> even though i was sad i was really sad yesterday and the sadness never lifted it literally i'm still going through it right now i'm kind of overcoming just by chatting but i've been crying all day used up a whole roll of toilet paper like today just <laughs> tears right anyway whatever lots and lots of spiritual attack going on in the cosmos and uh, lots and lots of wicked nightmares as well about family mistreatment and whatnot uh me being told that literally it's over for you just deal like gunjena settle i have been getting attacked and attacked and attacked but last night i sort of kind of jumped out of my slump just for five seconds i eventually slumped down again because i'm discouraged like very right but the thing that made me five seconds was putting the piece of the puzzle together where i said in my heart i'm i'm all caught up and then i heard the song because i can't live without you baby and i was like because <gasps> <laughs> the lord when i said i'm caught up was like exactly you know i was like oh my goodness god are you telling me that that song is my hard cry not so much for that guy because i'm done with him but for you and i'll be waiting oh for you when we when you get home or something right now of course the opposite of that where christ comes to give the church is i'll be waiting for you until you take me home type thing god has been reiterating ringing that mary j blige song in my mind to basically comfort me because you know the devil is an accuser the accuser of the brethren who accuses them day and night at the throne have you done that job is not that great a guy job just take away this stuff and you won't worship you anymore so i've been getting these flash flash visions of my sins from ugh, guys like when i was like seven <laughs> He brought back a sin where what was the most recent that like I read? There's a sin that he brought when I was like a kid. Like I was a child. Goodness gracious. I would have been judged for it. Like you know when when you like yes, thank you. It was a lascivious, licentious one, a sexual sin. Uh as a little girl where I peeped into like <laughs> the pants of uh, he wasn't my cousin, he was my mom's friend's son, and he was my age. And we basically did like a whole I'll show you mine if you show me yours. <laughs> And I did that as a could have been like eight. It's basically no, nah, not even eight, maybe even younger than that. According to Freud's psychosocial stages of childhood development, I was basically going through penis envy and that guy through castration anxiety. It is the phallic phase of childhood development where kids are like sex curious where they want to see body parts and they wonder why the boy has a dangling thing and the girl has an innie and he has an Audi. i was in that phase of childhood development and i sinned it's a sin in the eyes of god i understood it to be wrong and basically me and this boy made a deal with each other that i'll show you mine if you show me yours <laughs> <laughs> and we did exactly that right um and the devil like brought that back <laughs> i was like what you know guys you must take sin seriously i'm sorry i'm i'm flustered now because that was such a silly thing that i did anyway uh we have to take sin so seriously because even though you might forget about a sin i'm still all giddy even though you might forget about a sin right god doesn't like the lord does not forget it even when you are like seven six five in so far as you have some kind of a recognition in yourself of wrong and right if you are doing things in secret if i would never have done that in front of my mom or my dad or his mom or his dad we did it in private because we knew it was wrong do you understand what i'm saying me and that boy so there was a knowledge in us the conscience our conscience spoke volumes the invisible qualities of god spoke volumes and we both disregarded them we are gonna get whipped for our sin if we don't give our lives to christ from as early as then innocent as you might imagine them to be so all these people busy like polluting kids with the lgbtqia plus agenda with gender dysphoria apparently um where these kids uh, you 
know, uh, uh, dysmorphia or whatever they call it. With these kids that are literally being trained to focus on things that they ought not focus on, where they start to wonder if at all I'm a girl, I'm a boy, I'm, I'm, I'm non-binary, I'm what have you. You are investing sins in a child that they are also made to believe there's nothing wrong with them because of societal influence, but it's wrong in the sight of God. We're going to get judged for like sins from as early as we could comprehend wrong and right. And for some genius children, that is like three years old. That's like two and a half years of age where you know what you're doing is wrong, but you do it anyway. Yeah, no, the devil like spread that back up into me and I was so miserable and macabre on some, but God, I'm sorry about that. I'm sorry. I already said I'm sorry in 2011. I repented in 2011. I gave my life to Christ in 2011. But the accuser of the brethren is the one that's like, I remember when you were seven, remember when you were six, you were busy checking out a boy's like in nether region. Remember when you were like, you know, when you broke your virginity you remember when you did get yeah, all that stuff like he keeps on bringing back sins from back when I was lost and for me I, I I understand it thoroughly to be the accuser of the brethren who is accusing me day and night right but he's also bringing up sins that I have committed even as a Christian right there was a time when I was struggling because I was so angry I've been persecuted for eight years and uh, in all of my wrath and anger uh, there was a season where I, I literally started swearing I've never been a swearer even prior to coming to Christ I've never been one to use the F word the S word well, not much right okay I've always been one of those girls that are like, oh fudge, right? Mm. But then I got so abused in persecution that I started using the full F word, the full S word, whenever I would get harassed, attacked by my family members, by men. Like I've been so abused by men in this season that I have sworn at men in hard knock ways, like looking like a ghetto trash girl who is about these streets. I've gone through that because of frustration and lots of Christian persecution, right? And the devil reminded me of that. He reminded me of that. Um, goodness gracious and I was like but God I'm sorry and you know what, what he's doing is also trying to say okay fine so fine you say that you got redeemed in 2011 of all of the sins that you committed prior to that but what about all that time when you were swearing so much what about this what about that and he just kept on re-spurring it up into my uh, understanding and the Lord was like the devil is with great wrath his time is short we are not yet there in that phase of revelation where the devil gets kicked out of heaven after that war is won in heaven against the entities of darkness right but in the run up to the rapture there will be a similar but at a very a, a, a lighter level like a light like a diet version of that i've already spoken about that before a diet version of satan being with great wrath because he knows his time is short he, there will be a, an increase of intensity in the demonic realm because they in and of themselves will have understanding that the rapture is near they will see it and so they will have great wrath and so accuse us of sins that we've committed cause us lots of macabre cause us to second guess ourselves cause us to doubt our salvation i don't believe we can lose our salvation again that is doctrinal it is scriptural it is just in the bible it's basic I, the lord the father draws us to christ and we can't be plucked out of his hand we demons left us because he was never of us um we display that we were never saved at all when we walk away you know because the fruit of the holy spirit is is you know yeah etc like i'm not about to get into a whole doctrinal explanation as to why it is that we can't lose our salvation right because that's another story for another day altogether but i don't believe that and it's been my solid conviction since i was very new in the faith right very very new i started out thinking that we could lose our salvation to a point where i was sobbing <clears throat> begging god to make sure that i don't fall away please get here. until the lord gave me understanding that that can never happen I, I i thank the lord for helping me find the puritans i thank the lord for helping me find jonathan edwards i help i thank him for helping me find uh, charles spurgeon i thank him for helping me find men like paul washer stephen lawson i really thank the lord for getting me into reformed theology early because that comforted me fast of the sovereignty of God and salvation and so that I can't lose it but I also recognize the responsibility of man God's um sovereignty I also recognize within uh, the the grand scheme of his sovereignty our responsibility so I of course work really hard to work out my own salvation with fear and trembling I don't just very like a super hyper Calvinist just take in my stride that I'm going to heaven and so I just kind of dilly dally around doing nothing right cool um so uh, because of my theological training like from very early as a Christian I I have been solid in my belief that uh, ain't nobody snatching me out of the hand of God. My goodness, but these days <laughs> I've been getting told blasphemy of the Holy Spirit. I've been getting told pick to the mire. You know, when, when I'm doubtful, 
uh, the Bible says, I get it, ask anything that you want in, in faith and it'll be given to you. And if you believe in, in, in the Lord for what you ask for, you will get it. Because of my doubt these days, because of how traumatized and how afflicted I am by demonic attack, right? I have been doubtful of even whether or not I'll, do, I'll go in the rapture, right? Because I've been very angry, guys, at what everybody has done to me. So there's lots of uh, bitterness in me and I'm working really hard on forgiveness type thing, you know? And I'm here, out here, doubting that what if God doesn't take me because I'm upset that everybody hurt me? I've got lots of indignation in me. Like there's a lot of injustice that has slept my life that is uncatered to. Uh, I have yet to have those scales balanced out again. And so because of my indignation, I'm scared that God is going to leave me behind because I'm upset at everybody who hurt me who does want to say sorry. Except that indignation dwells in those saints under the altar who say, God, when are you going to avenge us our blood, right? These people who have martyred us, when are you going to avenge us? There is still that indignation in heaven. So there is a holy indignation where you want justice because something wrong has been done. And then there's an unholy one where you just want to kill them all, destroy and take matters into your own hand. I've been waiting on the Lord. So it's uh, robotic to not feel anger at injustice. It's robotic to not feel anger at impiety, to not be uh, convulsed in your spirit by indiscretion on by human beings, to not be troubled by it and perplexed and afflicted in your soul with a holy wrath. It is robotic to not feel anything and just to be like, no, God got this. Come on, it's robotic. Like move your neck. It is supposed to move. It is supposed to to motion left and right come on you know what i mean type establishment thing but the devil has been making me feel like you're, you're you're too angry you are too indignant you are too bitter and you are too um you know desirous of he calls it revenge and indeed it is a form of revenge right uh but more than anything it's a holy justice and the lord does say leave room for god's wrath it is for god to avenge so it is not necessarily problem problematic to want revenge what's problematic is taking matters into your own hands and i've not done that but i want revenge Revenge. So my desire for revenge is biblical, it's holy. I don't want these people to get away with murder. I either want them to repent and if they don't, they better get what's coming to them. Type establishment thing, right? I've been hurt for eight years straight, non-stop, like it's been a minute, right? Anyway, I need to get out of this like, nastiness, right? Anyway, whatever. Yeah, I've been getting accused by the devil of just holding on unforgivingly so to just bitternesses. When I think about the travesty of my life outcomes, how it is that I've always been very hardworking, how it is that I strove to acquire much of what it is that I acquired in life and how it was just snatched from me and people who have not worked a single day in their life but who wove like wove around just a magic wand to uh, wealth transfer people's entire uh, prosperities and inheritances into their little mini occult buckets uh, and they are getting taken seriously they're being respected they're getting fat they're getting sleep it's been really great in me. like people who are historically very irresponsible are currently being given the crowns of honor that are, are to be on my head because I worked do you understand I studied I, I did the time <laughs> I did the time in university I did the time in corporate and I did the time in school I was known as an academic in my school and here it is that I'm looking like a loser at the age of 38 and these things are not wrong for me to feel strongly about the the, the travesty of, of the eventuality that is slapping me I am indignant because this is wrong you know it, it, like it's written in God's word that when a wicked man takes over power the, the, the people on the ground they groan they moan they lament because wicked men are ineffectual when it comes to justice wicked men allow for the prosperity of lazy mediocre people that don't pull their weight but who know how to smooth talk their tongues drip with honey like that woman in Proverbs 7 and so because or is it 9 and so because their tongues drip with honey they get opportunities despite not actually being hardworking it is a travesty it is a travesty and also an abomination before Emmanuel so when I am upset at that I rightly am in my fit position to do so but the devil has been making me feel like you're just too bitter and on top of that why not give other people a chance I am all for giving people a a chance but not when they sit on their buttocks gathering dust and still gain favor anyway the level of indignation in me is exorbitant because of the just the depth of injustice that has slept my life people have grown in their careers that literally pulled the rug from under my feet so that they could get rid of me that they might shine instead of me so basically I was the best person for the job and I got moved out the way for the second best person and I got moved out in a very unjust cold way and years later my whole career has been decimated and I'm like a, basically a domestic worker in my mom's house stuff like that has been eating me whole I've been crying I've been consumed in sorrow for hours on end 24 48 hours the whole weekend it's Monday today do you understand and the Lord with all of that sorrow of course I of course because I've been waiting for so long the Bible says hope deferred makes the heart 
sick because I've been waiting for so long for my promise basically and because I got down on my knees and there was a time in when I was new in the faith you know and also a couple of years into the faith where every prayer that I prayed was an effective fervent prayer and you know that of a righteous man that availed much because I believed so strongly but after years of praying effective fervent prayers mixed with fasting and there being no answered prayer my heart has fainted and so my prayers are not as if as fervent as they used to be I am not as um faithful as I used to be but does the Lord not say he remains faithful when we're faithless for he cannot deny himself and the Lord remembers that we are made of dust and so he has mercy on us and on top of that because he knows that hope deferred makes the heart sick he knew that my prayers would lose oomph eh? they would be like a flat tire type establishment thing over the years because when you are a young gorgeous 26 year old woman praying for a husband you are hoping that you're going to be married within two years since you prayed that effective fervent prayer but then when you turn 38 still single and your biological clock is ticking you've got a geriatric womb you've lost your whole career you have been nothing but abused by bad men who tried to infiltrate themselves into your life opportunistically to exploit the situation you don't trust anybody you're traumatized and you can't for the life of you fathom how your elasticity how your elasticity still is um for pregnancy you know because you know the younger you are the better your shots of bouncing back from those stretch marks after pregnancy and yeah stuff like that so for me i'm just like you've let me age you've uh allowed me to get to a place where men are basically thinking that i gotta settle now and i in and of myself wanted to settle and i'm disquieted i'm disgruntled i'm hurt and i've been hurt so badly by men that i i'm nervous that i'm going to afflict a man with my trauma even if he's not slapping me with the same level of insanity that historical guys have right so all of these things are busy like din, 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 in my brain and um so therefore playing re praying so very flat tired tired prayers uh i don't know i just i kind of want to like switch on some other light because i feel as if the lighting conditions are eluding me now but anyway whatever like let's just carry on right this place can get really dingy that's why i prefer to use natural lighting the sooner we get this message out the way the better mm. yeah so i've been let me think let me think let me think let me, let me, let me, do i have a light anyway no let's just finish this okay i'm insecure now because this is not the best environment to record any video at all uh, in the evening especially because then i just get lambasted by bad lighting conditions but what yeah no so my prayers have, have gotten flatter and flatter and flatter as the years have progressed because of doubt doubt that god you know is gonna hear me if he's gonna bring anything at all has he set me apart for a life of singlehood but without taking away the desire for marriage has he set me apart for poverty like must i just live in poverty and just have one of those you know content mindsets where i can just say naked i came into this world naked i shall leave and you know yet in all i do i will praise the lord and make like job must i say that i know how to be brought low and how to abound and yet in all these things i know that godliness with contentment is great gain it's it's ish guys it's rough uh, for a woman to you know get to that place because like naturally by god's design we are the ones that get taken care of by men and in our young years we are most desirable and so therefore in a fit position to be weighed off and so when you get to an older age when you still desire marriage you kind of look like your that bus has already sailed or that train that train the flight has already departed and you you end up looking covetously at younger women who still have the years coming on and i was lamenting yesterday that god i um i wasn't a jealous woman at, at least i didn't struggle with it to a point of sabotage uh and on top of that i was i was going to be very content with aging because i know that i'm going to inherit an incorruptible body eventually so even if um my outward man is perishing i know that i've got this imperishable spirit within that renews me day by day that's going to also be a deposit into the incorruptible body later on that i'm going to drink out of the fountain of youth eventually again and i'm going to be a, a spring chicken again so i i literally never had um, some of the many qualms that women in this world who age have because i knew as soon as i came to christ i just i never struggled right uh but now i am i'm struggling and i've got covetousnesses in me that i never used to have like over especially younger women who are busy getting married and also women who are loved um generally by people by men by their husbands it's like but what is wrong with me type establishment thing yeah so my prayers have been like a nice little deflated balloon looking more like a prune than a like you know circular like a circle basketball that's like nicely pumped with air in it it's been looking more like a prune like a prune like a deflated beach ball yeah that's my faith okay it's like literally as tiny as a mustard seed if not half a mustard seed so my prayers are flat and the devil has been making me feel like it's only an effective fervent prayer of a righteous man that avails much and on top of that only if you believe what you ask for in prayer will you receive what you ask for it is written in the in, in god's word in the book of james that um you are unstable in all of your ways and are tossed twin from your fluffy 
if at all you pray and you don't actually believe in what it is that you're going, you've asked for in prayer. And he has been taunting me with that because he knows that I've got doubt and unbelief due to literally just the sheer amount of time that has progressed without answer prayer. And I'm like, yo, so does that mean that I'm basically just a lost cause now? Hey, since I can't pray those effective fervent prayers of a righteous man anymore, they don't avail much. So I've been sleeping to evangelists praying. I've been sleeping to prayer channels, hoping that they'll pray on my behalf because I need their faith. That's greater than mine right now. Due to the fact that mine is waxing thin, I'm very disquieted by these lighting conditions. Let me try and see if I can't correct. Hey, I closed the door. I have a light that was just behind me, actually. Don't know why I didn't just grab it. And the nice thing about this light is that it's it operates even in power cut but it dies like in five seconds because this african power grid this african power crisis is such that nothing at all that battery charges lasts very long because there's not much time for it to charge anyway whatever given that the power just keeps on leaving and coming and leaving and coming and leaving and coming yeah it's like that pig that returns to the maya anyway whatever so that's i, I don't know i don't want it to be like super bright to a point where now it's just like it's like glare all up in my grill that's causing you all different kinds of disquiet in your bones and you're like you're shaking and then you're getting photosensitive epilepsy because of me i don't want to do that anyway fine so that's what um ah, satan it's been doing in my brain and it's caused me to like you know shake in my pantyhose and my boots wither away just kind of walk around like a leaf shaking in a tree and an autumn leaf no how because you know there's no joy and chlorophyll in me yeah all that jazz you guys and so tears were just like coming down coming down coming down coming down i also had a nightmare the other day where i got woken up by some dark voice saying you're gonna get left behind and I was like, based on, literally, I woke up and I was like, based on what? <laughs> I literally wrestled with an entity where I was like, based on what? What's going to get me left behind? Because I'm living a life above report. What am I doing right now exactly that's going to make me disqualified? First of all, I can't even lose my salvation. What is wrong? Yeah, I had to wrestle. Wrestle. Do you understand? Anyway, I'm under a lot of attack, but that's only because currently the church is under attack. All of us. Um, because we are close to that time, that date. I don't want lighting that's just going to like make my life a living nightmare and yours too. Okay, like I said, photosensitive epilepsy. You might just find out that you have it through my ministry. I found out that there are kids that are actually getting Tourette's syndrome from watching TikTok because these tiny little short videos are so influential thanks to the neuro inhibitor that is a dopamine or whatever a neuro neuro receptor or whatever that is dopamine that's changing the constitution the chemical constitution of their brains to a point where people who have got Tourette's syndrome doing TikTok videos are actively infecting it's not even like scientifically explainable kids that have not got it do you understand with Tourette's simply because they listen to them for so long that they end up having these bursts these vocabulary or the, the, these um vocal like um disturbances that the people with Tourette's have they're getting them because their brains have been trained to like react to something they've seen repetitively it's like learning by mnemonics or something oh goodness wow social media is a satanic environment i'm sorry it's just it's horrendous hence why i just like dump and dive there like i just like upload content and move on i don't even check my analytics anymore i used to check them every so often sporadically i don't even check anymore because i'm not trying to get tourettes and i'm like I've, I've stopped watching tiktok videos ever since listening to that isaiah salvador um he's a christian brother whatever um he's a christian brother whatever it is that is going on on social media hey guys no you know and and it's also taking away the attention span of people so that's why i'm busy saying that right now you guys might actually develop like photosensitive epilepsy because i will like be switching a light on and switching it off and switching it on and switching it off and you might just be like all of a sudden like uh, 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 on the floor because of social media i don't know but this is youtube and this is long form content this is still normal i don't know don't get Tourette's and don't get my spiritual sadness because i'm sad like please let the glory of the lord emanate through me may the anointing anoint you too goodness gracious wow the devil got you under his skin this world is dying at like the fastest pace ever and everybody's trying to act like that's not even a thing yeah so i'm, I'm glad that tiktok is not my main platform really and congratulations to those people on tiktok who can do 10 minute videos and still have somebody latching onto them you've done a great job i'm struggling to get people listening to my one minute videos on tiktok anyway getting right back to the point 
point the devil has been all up in my grill about that uh and so he caused me he's been causing me to second guess if i've even if i'll even make the rapture if i will be okay and if at all the rapture is even happening i've been severely discouraged uh because what in the world kind of life is this who lives in this kind of squashed up environment who survives these living conditions who makes it to another day in this condition who apparently a child of god anyway right oh cool so i've had a lot of doubt and all that jazz and that doubt the devil has been riding it like the wave of a tsunami that's about to land on people at the beach that don't have time to run and so this here is my comfort space to come and speak about why it is that i'm under so much attack the lord is confirming to me over and over and over again you guys that we are going home this the the, the, the oh, satan has been trying to tell me that i am hyper philosophizing thank you i can't believe i said that word in one sitting without stuttering hyper philosophizing the millennial reign because i have got a self-fulfilling prophecy dwelling in my members because i'm bitter the devil is trying to make me feel like i'm some bitter person that's lost it all and now i'm trying to make the millennial reign look like uh, become true of what it is that is the environment that i'm going to gain much the lord has shown me right and i believe there are scripture there is scripture backing uh, to this and I have done a whole at length video about this so I'm not going to labor on it very much that I am going to gain everything everything that I've asked for in prayer that's why all these years appear to have been unanswered my effective fervent prayers of my earlier Christianity availed much they did and just last night the Lord said to me that um what is this I was crying I've been crying I've been crying right and I was like but but why didn't you just let me live why didn't you just let me live like that was what I was asking God with these tears trickling why didn't you just let me have a husband the kids the career look at all my brothers and sisters online with their lives and their kids and their lives and all that jazz and I was like why didn't you just let me live right and God was like because then you wouldn't have gotten the inheritance I set apart for you and I was like but then when is it gonna come right I just keep asking God the same questions again and he keeps on answering them over and over again in the same way with the same answers but when I see them doubt and believe oh you of little faith oh you of little faith right that's where I'm sitting that is where I'm finding myself I keep on getting nightmares of me getting married on this side but in a really lackluster sort of kind of tie a punctured little ceremony with some dude that's essentially just running away with me because my family treats me like trash something that I didn't ask for. and the Lord says that he's gonna provide exceedingly and abundantly above anything at all that I could ever ask for he's basically showing me half-hearted versions of reception or of provision of what it is that I asked for and guys I've been fervent ever since I came to Christ like I never ever had a season of backsliding in 11 years I've basically stayed really strong I even wondered and I asked the Lord God am I a prodigal daughter <laughs> am i a prodigal daughter do i need to come back home and god was like oh well your sadness is not the tantamount of reprobate not reprobateness but um backsliding being sad and sorrowful and, and doubtful of me is not the equivalent of backsliding you know what backsliding is go read galatians 5 the fruit of the sinful nature that's what backsliding is so just because you've had unbelief for a season uh but you did not as a result capitulate to, to fornication as a result cap capitulate to uh lies stealing whatever it is that, that was your former lifestyle prior to coming to me if you have not walked actively in that again if you have not gone back to the mire basically as a piggy or the vomit as a doggy you are not backslidden you are just languishing you're suffering you're lamenting go and check out lamentations go and check out habakkuk jeremiah isaiah you are lamenting you are groaning you are sorrowful you are fearful for your future go and read the psalms psalm 102 um, i was reading psalm 102 today and i cried it's like my bible i have this thing that i do i mean some people might say that don't do that god was unbiblical but like based on what exactly well i just open to like a random part of scripture and i read that and sometimes the stuff that i read is just so bullseye bullseye that i'm like there's no way that that was not ordered by god man right so i landed on psalm 102 this afternoon and i read it and i was like <laughs> <laughs> like over it like there's even on okay it's the other bible yeah both my bibles are mini and this bible yeah as you can see it's open on psalm 100 well 103 over there but if you just page back one page you're on 102 and psalm 102 speaks about do not hide your face from me right i um read this psalm having opened it randomly and i was like but this is totally my life this is totally my life this 
is my life right uh and i was just like all up uh, in that business of crying and um i don't know if you can see at the bottom here you know when you've cried on a page how it gets all crinkled up i was crying can you see how crinkled up it is just there can you see that yeah i was like <laughs> And the tears land, like one of my tears landed on my pages and it got like all crinkled up type thing. I think I might even read this psalm to you. But it's basically a, 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 a prayer where I'm like, where, where basically the psalmist is saying, Hear me, it's been a minute. Oh, why aren't you hearing me? It's been a minute. And the Lord has been telling me all this time, right? That when I'm thinking that I'm backslidden, maybe that's why he's not hearing me. Because I know that the prayers of the wicked are an abomination to Emmanuel. So I was like, have you not answered my prayer? Because my prayers are an abomination to you. Am I weird? Have I fallen? Is that what's happening? <laughs> do I have to do something to have you hear my prayers? Because I have so much unanswered prayer. It's ridiculous. And the Lord has told me, no, you are going to get everything you ask for in prayer. But I was like, when? I'm basically 40. And on top of that, I'm so PTSD'd that I am no way and ever, ever going to be a pleasant wife anymore. I'm just going to be this like thorn in the flesh of my husband. He's always going to be under so much attack from all my pain. Right? Uh, type establishment thing. That's why I talk to God.